So uh, part of the objective was to have uh, Jitsi uh, video conferencing on OpenBSD and to, to um, have a, a development uh, environment where I can prove that all of the needed core components can be isolated so there's no magic discovery or hidden communication whatever which would bite you when you try to scale out uh, later on so all the communication channels uh, would be known and to realize that I was uh, using uh, one bare metal machine with OpenBC of course and then VMM configuration to have uh, four virtual machines for the four basic components um, of um, that you need for providing a simple basic Jitsi video conferencing session. On the OpenBSD side, uh, well-known VMM, nothing special here. Uh, VMCTL for controlling the VMs and the VM.conf I'm showing uh, on how to define them. And on the Jitsi side, you just have a web server that can do reverse proxying of HTTP and then an XMPP server and uh, for given the reference uh, implementation they have, uh, Prosody is the, let's say, natural choice for that. From Jitsi, uh, Jitsi itself, there's Chekofo, the Jitsi conference focus server, who manage manages all the requests about uh, who is needing a web conference, who is talking to whom and uh, in which room, and can also assign then the needed video bridges, which is the next component, which is an SFU for all the, the media streams that are going out to the browser, so um, it's not messing up between the diff um, conferences that might be running in parallel, so that one decides Jack Hoffer decides which JVB is connected to uh, which user. An additional thing what most people want is uh, Chipri, the Jitsi broadcasting infrastructure for recording those conferences and um, streaming them out to, to YouTube. And for whatever reasons, that part YouTube is hard-coded, so you cannot use something, something else right now. They say they will make in making it up more generic, but that's the to-do list for the last three years or something. I skipped that a bit. So that's the needed TCP IP networking. You actually need, if you go to the default uh, installation instructions, you would see an architecture of maybe 12 components, uh, components and then maybe three communication channels between all those and that is just overflowing the, mi uh, the people's mind. But this is what you actually need. So the browser to the, to the web server and proxy to Prosody and a connection to the, the video bridge. That's all you need. On the um, internal side of Jitsi, there's just the video bridges. Here I have chosen two for showing a bit of scale out and an external Jitsi bridge uh, recorder uh, and they are going all to present, uh, advertise their presence, their health um, to, to Prosody and Jack Kofo is just subscribing to that channel and pulling in health information like I have an unallocated video bridge I could use for the next uh, web conference request. This one didn't work. <laughs> That's just the install steps. I will skip those a bit, bit, bit more briefly. So we are creating just a basic uh, OpenBSD install system into a QCAR2 image and then copy it over for all the four machines. And with this uh, vm.conf, those four machines are being brought up with a local, local networking setup. So that's all you need. Uh, of course, all those uh, VMs could run on their own bare metal machine. There is no hidden or implicit uh, communications channel which would only work on a VMM-based machine. So that would be a, a valid architecture for having four VPS machines, two at DigitalOcean and two at Hetzner. So that would still work with the setup. 
Uh, the one thing you want to have for less typing or whatever is a uh, host entry and um, there will be way more FQTNs but you only need one <coughs> DNS entry and this is for more or less your main URL and everything else is not only optional but uh, maybe you really do not want to have that because that can have really bad side effects. So only add more DNS entries if you really know what you are doing because you are shifting gear to completely different spaces. Um, on the firewall side, I will skip that a bit, but all, all the configuration is that way, that in both directions, um, PF is blocking and we are allowing really only the needed communication channels inbound and outbound. And if you just cut them all together, you could uh, just make that happen for a local host, everything on local host machine. So we need uh, access to, to the web server, to the Java video bridge over 10,000 uh, 10, UDP. The communication between um, the Jitsi part and Prosody, Nginx to Prosody of course, and then you can have also no debug um, connections. Web server needs, needs those two inbound and this one outbound. On the Brosity side, um, the XMPP ports, the 5222 uh, that's used for the internal uh, communication with start TLS and all that. So Jacofo and JVB connecting there. And the other part is the Bosch or WebSocket requests coming from the Nginx web server to Brosity. Uh, outbound, outbound becoming inbound and the other way around, so the, that's just flipped over. And um, the video bridge is exposing a monitoring uh, and metrics interface on 8080, so you want to restrict that if, if you need it at all. And the same is with Tchaikovo, which is only communicating internally, so you can have only um, the XMPP port to XMPP. And the health and metrics endpoint is documented on uh, four times eight. And there is something listening, a web server, a chatty web server, but it's on always returning 404. So it's broken and I had no time to research what's happening over there. On the Prosody side, we need two more modules. That's mainly for authentication for Tchaikovo. And there's no additional configuration in Prosody needed along that. And for Prosody itself, the, the main thing is uh, to have HTTP interfaces or HTTPS, uh, because otherwise in default configuration, Prosody will only listen on local host. And that's not very useful when you're coming from a different machine to it. And the two modules you really, really need <laughs> is, of course, Bosch and PubSub, or PubSub. Um, Bosch is the client uh, uh, protocol. They are like um, either the mobile element client or the web browser, and um, Prosody itself. And PubSub is that part that the video bridge and Tchaikovsky is using. SSL um, enabling uh, is pretty painless. I will show that in a second. And here you see already we have an additional virtual host, but it's really a virtual host. So please no additional DNS for of JTS. Then there's a component for the chat within the web conference. There's always a little sidebar if you enable that. You need a component registration for that uh, being type multi-user chat. Um, this component entry is only the authentication credentials for the Java, uh, Jitsi video bridge. And the new model of authentication here is uh, the aforementioned client proxy and it's using uh, this username at this realm. Again, no DNS entry for that. Think of virtual host or realm. 
And this one uh, is almost the same, but here we are talking about that part that Tchaikovsky um, recognizes um, the bridges subscriptions when they say we are available to handle um, video conferencing, then they will join this multi-user chat and have something like a special signaling, hi, I'm here, please abuse me. And they might change from, they might change uh, with the next release in the, in the video bridge from, from this authentication scheme to this one. So if it suddenly stops working, check here. So we can uh, create um, user further user authentication. JVB uh, had we had already seen as a component with a component secret. Uh, fo focus Tchaikovsky is using a real user. So we enable and start Prosody, and then we register the user where change focus is the password. And then the subscription. I'm unsure what it's doing under the hood because it's brand new. In Jitsi terms, I have had no time to, to look at what's happening in, in detail, but it's needed, so it's written on here. Uh, on terms of TLS, uh, Java is not using etc SSL certs uh, directory or whatever, so you need your, your own part uh, called a key store. Uh, this is the command to create such a thing. Um, with Prosody CTL search generate, you are running more or less a wrapper about open SSL requests, so you get that dialog or whatever tool you want to have to just have a standard X509 certificate request and self sign it. And this CRT file can be imported into a key store with this keyhole command. And you have to copy that uh, result. Uh, Tchaikovsky.store to the Tchaikovsky VM and JVB key store, which is the same file anyway, um, to the uh, JVB VM, or you do it the other way around, you copy over the CRT file and create the store files on their VM respectively. What you sh really should not do is uh, fiddling within the JDK, uh, JDK installation itself with CA certs the next update and you are dead with that functionality. But the Jitsi installer for Debian all in one VM is exactly doing that. So for the web server, that's the network configuration and for the uh, software installation, so Nginx um, is just a simple package add, of course. And we can use uh, the OpenBSD ACME client for Let's Encrypt. And what we created, uh, I was, um, it was committed three days ago, something in current, is Jitsi Meet. Uh, I have a bonus slide and now I can show it. <laughs> uh, how to backport it for 7.1. It should even work on 7.0. You just have to re recompile or repackage um, the, the whole thing takes, even on a slow machine, maybe 20 minutes uh, to create uh, Java parts. Jitsi Meet itself is just, uh, I think, 10 megabytes of JavaScript, PNG files, MP3s for the sound effects and all that. So that's pretty quick. And Nginx configuration for using that. Of course, you need a virtual uh, host server name. Uh, www.chitsimeet is populated with that package add, so that's already uh, in place where it needs to be. Um, you need server-side include um, that the client configuration is in the file system. It's a, con it's a JavaScript file called config.js, I'm showing in a, in a second. And that will be included into the uh, delivered uh, index page. So the client has a configuration where to look at. And these um, web pages are loading JavaScript, CSS, and all this stuff from the file system. Again, wad up the web sheets you meet. And uh, so that is uh, accessed and delivered properly. 
Uh, external API chess is for the element mobile client tool. That's more or less um, <laughs> legacy support until they are changing the mobile client to config.js or whatever. The connection from um, the web server to the um, Prosody machine is a simple proxy pass with uh, this HTTP bind as being the, the magic string here. And who can tell me what this one is doing? <laughs> Who's running Chitsy? No one, right. So that's just a regex and it more or less saying we match everything that's likely a typical um, URI path. Uh -huh. yeah. And if that happens, we just throw it away and we stop evaluation. Why would we do that? Well, in Jitsi, uh, every f everything after, or as a URI path, you start with a slash whatever, then whatever is your conference name. But whatever is not matching this location and it's not matching anything in the, in the file system, so it would produce a 404. And this one is just saying, oh no, <laughs> keep, just keep it under the rug. But the JavaScript know, uh, knows that it was re the requested path. And so they can operate, and then they are fiddling that information on different means by not just uh, the plain HTTP request. That's the old trickery in here. The more you know. <laughs> so that's the full configuration. Minus uh, the dot well known handling, that's just another three, four lines, but a slide is just that big. But it's in the uh, GitHub repo included. On that very uh, config.js, you have the, dom the domain in which you are operating in, and you call what's the name of the, of the uh, user chat. But again, no DNS here, not needed and not, uh, not, ad not advisable, but otherwise it might run to a completely different location, so that's not, not nice. Uh, for Bosch, just the same, that's schemeless, but actually you could use HTTPS over here because you need HTTPS, otherwise Chrome and Firefox and all those won't ever start your camera because that's unsecure. Uh, turn UDP typically false, but if you are on double-sided NAT and whatever, you might try to turn that to true. If stuff improves then, if not, you are in uncharted territory or at least difficult uh, ones, and you can have a uh, welcome page or not where either you say you are only offering fixed conference names or you have a welcome page where everybody can start a conference with their name of choice. And also for that uh, you can enable or disable certain set settings, for example by phone dial-in because I hate that. So N It's not working, I have no information, just remove the button. And also in relation to uh, NAT environments, uh, STAN servers, um, here you might have to check, uh, I don't know if this one is actually passed, but some of such information from the client could end up in the backend and then used from there. Remember about um, re restricted outbound connections. So it might happen that um, the video bridge is trying something in this, in this regard. So always lock uh, outbound connections, if it, especially if it doesn't work. Does the, when you use a stone, uh, was there a reason you were using, I presume a stone or was it, or was it actually a particular part of the Jitsi? Like was that a stone, is that part of the Jitsi? Like well, I call a stone, is it like a stone of client or? Um, ba what Eston uh, is doing here is more or less uh, trying to figure out which side is natted and if both who has which public IP address and then telling the other side what is your public IP address and port for, for the upcoming connection. So it's something like NAT discovery, whatever. Yeah. What's my IP address from server side and from client side and then 
both uh, both tuples to to each other. So. Thank you. so that's the configuration in full. Um, the default configuration file where you have all the comments in there. Um, so it's not the default, but more or less the. Let's explain everything is almost 200 lines, so, but that's what you need. Um, so as you can see, uh, we, we have created packages um, for Chekofo and JVB. Uh, and this is installing not only the char file, which comes with already all dependencies included, a so-called fat char. So you do not have to run uh, or fetch chars from somewhere else, but the package builder is responsible to have one nice big fat char. <laughs> But it includes all the things and uh, you are not running into wild dependency failures or whatever. And this one um, needs some configuration naturally and this configuration is for the startup script. So we are providing an RC uh, script so we can use RCCTL later on. And you do not have to start no hub Java dash char whatever wild thing is but you have a configuration file for the RC CTL startup script, where to find the main configuration, the logging um, for, for it, and we are also using um, the, the standard uh, daemon logging via uh, syslog. So that's the default already, and what you can enable uh, in here for the real Hefty debug stuff is, for example, an XMPP packet debug log. So you can see what's happening in this internal uh, MUC channel. Where Chaikofu is checking for are there any video bridges? Are they healthy? Are they gone? Are they allocated? And if you suspect that there is something wrong, you can look into that one. And that's just commented in here, so you can use that easily. Here's the key store um, I've been talking about with key tool and its password. So that's a clear reference and not it's doing it's using something some places, but really a fixed location. And then Java properties uh, or JVM properties like uh, how much heap to use, uh, SSL key sizes. So the internal communication right now with this setup is TLS version 1.3 everywhere even the internal communications and from external as well. And if you need something fine-tuning of like minus um, capital D and then some cheese, uh, garbage collector fine-tuning stuff also, you can do that in Java Sysprops. The startup script is uh, passing that on verbatim to the JVM later on. So the Chaikofu configuration, it is a bit shortened. I have the, the full configuration, is maybe 30 lines, 24, whatever. Uh, also in the GitHub repo. Uh, two things really notable is that JVB Brewery is a magic string. Do not change it. You can change almost everything in those uh, uh, settings if they as long as they are in sync but JV Brewery is some um, uh, considered magic whatever uh, almost the same area the XMPP connection name can only be client or server and please written with a capital C or S but the actual client definition has to be with a lowercase C or S if you are using server here and you have to disable SCTP on OpenBSD or any non-Linux machine, more or less. Uh, that's more for completeness right now, since this will be replaced in future setups or, or versions from uh, Chekhovo and JVB as well um, with WebSockets. And then the real username password and Everything coming in via this authentication realm will be uh, considered a, a useful member of the Jitsi community services. Let's put it this way.
Um, and then there's one pet peeve with me, like <coughs> their default self-hosting guide, whatever, assumes you have not only all the components on one VPS or one, one machine at all, it also is directly connected with a public, with a public external reachable address and whatever, and everything is pointing to that. And so, for the startup of Chaikovo, you need to point it to the XMPP server, and you cannot use an IP address here because we would only be using an in internal uh, connection. So. I cannot uh, say, please contact uh, 100.64.3.3. That won't work because it needs the host name for the internal uh, XMPP configuration. Just think again, again, like uh, virtual host hosting in, in Apache Nginx and whatever. So use a real um, FQDN that fits for the virtual host and then fake the DNS entry with etc host or split DNS if you dare to and have that. Syslog configuration as easy as you can get with all package software that's using RCCTL, just track over for the name, um, called binary name, which is a shell script in this case, but anyway, and then enable and start it. Jitsi video bridge. Same game, package add, reference the configuration file and the logging, um, the key store again, um, uh, Java garbage collector configuration uh, and an open Java sysprops for whatever you might need. And in JVB there's a component uh, especially for the so-called nut harvester, which is again doing silly stuff about what's my address locally, what I'm bind to, what's my external address, and maybe I am on AWS and then something, you're getting different results, so we have to query some cloud API, whatever. And the um, properties for those are still in a file called zipcommunicator.properties, and the location for that must be done via two different configuration options, so you cannot merge that. You have to write it etc and the home name is JVB and then this path is being read. Good luck finding that one out. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, already? <laughs> so in the configuration, um, same, same part, thing as a realm, and here it's JVB brewery magic again. If you want to grab your Chekhovo log, you can use a nickname with whatever you like. So that one is free, but JV Brewery has to stick with that one. SCTP, IZ. And if you really want or have to have the video stream over TCP, here's your port setting. And that's the default for UDP. And that's this uh, described zip communicator. So you have your local address and the public address write it down fixed so it matches your, your setup and uh, tell all this auto discovery goodbye like disables this harvester too. Syslog configuration is already mentioned and we go. So the pitfall is the mentioned IP address and please start the services in this order. Uh, I've been talking about those, like version bumps without not that much of a documentation, logger, and the initial startup is slow, so please keep it easy. <laughs> and missed commas in JSON JavaScript is always fun. Um, the live demo, I was showing it uh, in the main original talk, uh, it works, but we skip it here for time reason, we can still, still do it. And if then time permits. So it works. Uh, the ports are committed three days ago or so and we might do a meta which just bundles all the free thingies and a local all on local host configuration for better reference. And with that you can can scale out but you have to look at it like something like Chaikovo is not meant to be scaled on multiple instances and all this stuff. 
Um, SRTP is the next stuff to come. That's uh, inline crypto, which is like factor 20 faster or even more. And moving from Bash, Bosch to WebSockets for because it's WebSockets. And um, the recording stuff ne needs a Linux VM because they are using a headless Chrome, Chrome driver and then ripping with FMPEG the, the resulting <laughs> stream in on, on the disk, it's a mess. And Chigazi was this part, uh, POTS zip dial in, no, just no. So yeah, uh, of course, thanks for, for OpenBSD and Shitsi for the software, my employer for countless and countless hours figuring this shit out. <laughs> Uh, Aisha Tammy really for uh, creating the, the ports and packages um, thing because I was already so uh, exhausted with finding out all the magical stuff within uh, Chitsi, so the port stuff was done by, by her, really good props, and Misha providing the uh, demo infrastructure, we, we did the setup within two hours or so. Only following this talk and the uh, configuration that's in the, in the GitHub repo where this QR code or this short URL is pointing to. Presentation made with Quarto, I can really recommend that. And this is a demonstration how you can backport to, to 7.1 or it probably works in 7.0 as well. So that's not much you, you have to do just to, for a new make package so it fits uh, a 7.1. And then you can install it with this little hack. And some interesting log files, uh, more or less, like if you have the wrong key store or it's completely missing, then you get that. Um, that log file in uh, XMPP, this one has a wrong password in the, key, um, in the definition. So this would come at first and if the key store is okay but the password is wrong, you're getting advancing to this one uh, and here it is all good. Uh, and then it can take a while on the Chekhovo side, you are starting JVB and it might take exactly that interval before you are seeing this one and only after that your web conference will work. Before this point in time uh, it will just say it doesn't work on the, on, the web, on the browser side because internally it will say I do not have a healthy video page to be used. And that's it. All right, questions? Okay. Thank you.